when you blow up a balloon, it's really hard to get that initial bit of inflation into the balloon. But if you inflate it again, it's a lot easier. So I thought I'd do some measurements with a pressure sensor and a Raspberry Pi to see what those pressures are. So I've got a BMP280 pressure sensor hooked up to a Raspberry Pi computer and this is on a dowel so I can stretch a balloon over it. So the sensor goes in the actual balloon and I can stretch that over the dowel to get a seal and then a compressed air blowgun goes in here to inflate it. And you can see the pressure is going up to about oh, almost 70 centimeters of water equivalent water column height. And now that it's gone past that initial hump, even though we're adding more air, the pressure is dropping. And now I'll let the air out again slowly. And this balloon is a little bit stretched compared to what size they are originally, so now let's reinflate it. And this time we're only getting up to about half the pressure that we got before. And we'll go a little bit bigger this time. And back down. And third inflation. Even less still. Oh, well, that's good pressure there. And gone. So I graphed the pressure versus the balloon diameter and that first initial inflation before it really gained much size, the pressure for that was almost as high as what it took to explode the balloon in the end. Um, so as I kept inflating here, the balloon's actually getting bigger but the pressure is dropping by about half. Then I deflated it and inflated again and this time that initial surge was only half as much as it was the first time around because the rubber had been pre-stretched and let it back down and inflating it a third time even less because it got even more stretched because I got it bigger and then on the fourth time I just kept on going so the pressure did build up to about here and then the balloon exploded. I wonder if pre-stretching this balloon will make it easier to inflate so uh, let's give this thing a good stretch and in this way a few more stretches so last time that initial surge was up to 70 that's up to this line here and this time, not even to 60. So that did help a little bit. That hardly made a difference, so uh, I'll try to stretch it even more. Nope doesn't make much of a difference. But rubber actually pulls harder when it's warm, so this may be harder to inflate with warm air from my mouth. Let's try this with the sensor in the balloon and I'll try to blow it up with the wire in my mouth. So that was in fact a higher surge than I got with the compressor. And let's try it with one of these nasty little elongated balloons. Certainly much harder to get out of my inflation contraption. So pressure's already building just by leakage without me actually pushing on the trigger. So that surge went up to 123. Just off the scale here. Hundred and thirty, hundred and forty, one sixty, one seventy, one eighty, one ninety. Whoa, that was loud. My ears are ringing. And I've also got some of these other balloons that are a little bit bigger straight out of the bag. I think these might be easier to inflate. Oh yeah, that's much less. That went up to about 56 or so, so considerably less than the smaller balloon. So 
So my takeaway is choose the bigger balloons. They're much easier to inflate than the small ones. And these skinny ones, like these ones, these are just plain evil. You'll hurt yourself with those. And I just had to try this. I put a skinny balloon in a medium balloon in a big balloon. This might actually explode three times. And I changed the scale in the program so that it uh, shows the bar graph a bit better for that. I don't know, I think the uh, medium one failed uh, together with the small one, maybe. This time I'm pre-nesting the balloons before I put them on the gadget. And I changed the scale on my display even further. So that's uh, 0.2 atmospheres right there, by the way, that it went to. And now it's getting up to a quarter atmosphere. And I can see there's uh, shreds of two balloons inside. Looking at my graph again, there was this counterintuitive drop in pressure as the balloon initially inflated. But if we look at it in terms of surface tension of the balloon, it actually doesn't decrease, but only increases slowly up until where the balloon really stretches. But as the balloon inflates, actually, the uh, surface becomes quite a lot thinner. So calculating the uh, stress on the surface in terms of megapascal, we can see it uh, increases quite dramatically just before the balloon bursts. And that looks very exponential. And if I put that on a log graph, the maximum stress on the material does in fact follow an exponential curve. And at the point of bursting, it's at 100 megapascal, which is very impressive because structural steel fails at 250 megapascal, only two and a half times more than this rubber. And one more test I thought of. I've put a big balloon inside a little balloon, so I should be able to explode the blue one off the yellow one. Wow! There we go! Now I just gotta clean up this mess. I am the evil Archduke. <laughs>